So you've watched tons of videos on decluttering. You've maybe read some books on minimalism, decluttering, and simple living. You followed all the tips and tricks and strategies to live a clutter-free life, but yet somehow your home is still cluttered. If this sounds like you or someone that you know, today I'm going to share with you some of the top reasons as to why your home is still cluttered, even though you've probably tried everything that's out there. The first reason is that you have too much decor. Think about when you walk into someone's home. Probably the first thing that you do is you're looking around and you probably notice their decor, things hanging on the wall, something bright and shiny sitting on their table. So if you have a lot of these in your home, it's going to be kind of overwhelming for the eye. In order to create a more relaxed and peaceful environment, you're going to want to reduce the decor you have in your home. I'm not saying you need to take down every single decor piece in your home, but try removing certain items from each room and then give it a few days or weeks and see how that space now makes you feel with less decor in it. It might be just the breath of fresh air that your space needed. You have wires and cables exposed everywhere. I don't understand why we still have so many wires and cables. Like it's 2022, why can't we figure out something to do with these things? But apparently there's still a big cause of clutter in people's homes. Consider finding creative ways to hide the wires and cables that are sticking out in your home. I know that there are a few cable organizers that you can find in stores or on Amazon and maybe that'll work for you and your space. Unfortunately for me, I actually did order some to try out in my space, but it just did not work at all. Even though it didn't work for my space, it might work for yours, so it doesn't hurt to try it out. Having to see wires and cables all the time is not very pretty, so I'm sure you can find some way to hide the wires and cables or figure out some kind of system that'll work for your space. Try to keep all the cords, cables, and chargers either neatly organized in a specific space or see if that you can hide them overall because having all those things out all the time, it can look pretty cluttered. Things don't have a home. I feel like I say this in a lot of my videos, but that's because this is the biggest tip that I can give if you want to have a clutter-free space. When things don't have a home, these items will literally float around from space to space, from room to room, because they don't have a home. Make sure to have a spot for everything so once you're done using it, it can go back into that spot and it's not sitting on your countertops and just floating around from room to room. Keys can be hung on a key rack, a jacket or a coat can be hung in the closet in a specific space. Purses can have their own designated hook somewhere in your home. These are just some examples of what you can do to have homes for some of your items. Before I move on to the next reason, I have an exciting announcement to make. I have finally finished my first ebook, How to Declutter Your Home, A Simple Guide to a Clutter-Free Life. So in this ebook, it's 34 pages of taking you through the step-by-step -step process from beginning to end of your decluttering journey. You will find helpful questions to ask yourself when decluttering, mistakes to avoid, how to declutter responsibly, and so much more. I've worked a long time to create this ebook, so if you're looking for something more in depth in addition to the tips in this video, I hope you guys check out my ebook. It's available for only $5 and you can find the link down below if you want to check it out. Once you purchase the ebook, you'll be able to view it and download it right away. There's no email required or anything like that, so I hope you consider in checking it out. It's only $5, and it would also help support me and my channel, so I hope you guys check it out. The link will be down below. The next reason is that things are overflowing from their designated space. So if you have a closet, cabinet, drawer, or something like that where you're afraid to open it each time that you need to open it, that's probably because it's overfilled with stuff. So this means that it's time to reassess what you have and see what you can declutter. Having excess stuff in your space is going to make it look cluttered and it's also probably not very functional. So once you get rid of all that excess stuff, it's going to be a more functional space for you to work with and you won't be afraid to open that drawer or cabinet and have things falling down from everywhere. I 
feel like a lot of us have at least that one space in our home where we open it and things are just way too full. There's too much in there. I recently had that issue with one of my drawers where I keep my pajamas. I was like, this is really hard to push clothes and when I open it, all the clothes pop up. So I was like, it's definitely time to evaluate what I have. After letting go a couple of items, now my drawer opens and closes easily and I'm not afraid to open it. You haven't tackled your paper clutter. Kitchen counters are notorious for attracting mail, bills, kids, school projects for some reason, and it can easily add clutter to anyone's home. If you don't already have a paper system in place, it's definitely time for you to do that if you find yourself just having way too many papers on your kitchen counters, on your office desk, or wherever you have all your paperwork. I actually have a video where I share tips with you on how you can manage and eliminate paper clutter for good, so go ahead and check that video out. You're not using up products. I used to be so bad at this ever since becoming a minimalist. Now I make sure to use up every single item I have before going out to purchase a new one. I think a lot of us just get afraid that we're going to run out of a certain product, so when there's like this much left in that bottle, we go to the store and purchase a new one, but when we do that, we just tend to open the new one instead, and then the other one just kind of sits there in the counter, in the cabinet, gets pushed back, and it never gets used. So now what I do is that I make sure that I use every single drop of an item before purchasing a new one. This is definitely a habit that I've had to build myself because again, I was not that person to use up products ever. And so over time, I kind of trained myself to use up products before going out to purchase new ones. So a lot of times I see people have in their homes that they'll have duplicates of certain items because they have not finished using up one item yet and they went and purchased a new one. Try to use the products. It's less wasteful if you do. You have duplicates. So sometimes having duplicates is okay. It kind of depends on your situation and what the product is, but typically having duplicates is not really necessary to have in your home. For example, just a few days ago, I was trying to open a bottle of wine and I noticed that I have two wine openers. One's an electric one that makes it really easy for me to open the bottle and another one is one of those like handheld corkscrew ones that's kind of hard to use and I always have trouble using it. So I looked at my items and I was like, well, I typically gravitate towards the electric one because it's way easier than the manual one. So I was like, why do I need to have the manual one? I think it's time to let it go and just use the electric wine bottle opener. So that's something that I discovered recently. I don't know why I had the manual one when I just prefer using the electric one, but that's just an example. Maybe you have some of those items in your home where you have a favorite item over another one and see if that's something that you can let go of the one that you typically don't use. You keep empty boxes. I actually saw a meme a while ago of people hanging on to their old iPhone boxes and I found myself holding on to one too a while ago and I'm just like, I don't understand why we hold on to these things. Like if you are going to actually repurpose it and use it for like a container or something like that, that's great. But otherwise, like we just sometimes keep empty boxes of things because we want to maybe return it or maybe we think that we're going to need it to store something in and the empty boxes just sit there and just go unused. When I did my closet organization video, I pulled some stuff down and I found an empty box for something I had no idea what it was even for. So again, I don't know why we keep things like this, but we do. So look around your home and see if you have any empty boxes laying around that you can you leave dishes to pile up. One of the habits that I've started doing since becoming more minimal is to do the dishes as often as I can and avoid letting them pile up and sit there for days. I was definitely that person that procrastinated when it came to washing dishes. I would let things pile up and eventually get to them. But now when I see a couple of dishes here and there in the sink, I will wash them right away instead of waiting for more dishes to end up in the sink. 
If you have a dishwasher, immediately rinse your dishes after use and stick them in there instead of just having them sit there in the sink and just letting things pile up. Having no dishes in the sink is definitely very aesthetically pleasing, at least it is for me, but I love how that feels and it makes my kitchen just feel cleaner overall. So that's another tip for you guys to consider if you leave your dishes piling up. If you enjoyed this, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so already for more weekly videos on simple living and minimalism. Once again, I have my ebook linked down below for you guys. It's only $5, so I hope you consider checking it out. I worked really hard on it and I would love for you guys to support me and my channel. And finally, just simplify your home and live a clutter-free life. If you do check it out, I would love your feedback. You can leave me a comment on my YouTube videos or follow me on Instagram and message me on there or even send me photos of your progress. I would love to see that. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys soon.